a show it was, what a show it certainly was. Ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your set. I am Hitman Cos. Welcome to your official review for Elimination Chamber. And, of course, I'm not alone on this endeavor. Please welcome, as always, the humble man, Gary. Gary, welcome to the contracts. Yo, yo, yo. What's good? What's good? What's good? My man, Cos Payton. And shit, man, that was uh, it was definitely quite a show, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, uh, well, let's, well, let's get into it. Yeah, let's do this shit like Brutus. All right. Well, to start things off was the women's elimination chamber. Oh um, yeah. Um, and I was, and one thing that actually caught me off guard was that. Uh, in Australia, I hate to say it, what it, but uh, it was Tiffy time. Cause, oh yeah. Cause she got she got a good reception. Oh yeah. When Tiffany came out, she she got a bit of a pop. And then, the fact, yeah. Like I did not expect that, but hey, you know. Oh uh, yeah, me so, either. So hey, I guess in Australia. It's it's Tiffy time. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. But in any case, um, unfortunately for them, Tiffany wasn't st- wasn't starting the match. She was in the pod. Right, that's a fact. Yeah, but but Naomi and Becky Lynch started the match. Right. Now. To start things off, they were on some cruiserweight shit, just doing mad pin attempts back to back. More of a feeling, yeah. more of a, more of a feeling out process, if you will. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then there was this nice moment where Becky threw Naomi into the chamber. However, she caught herself and grabbed onto it and began to climb up. To which then, to which then Becky tried to grab her leg, but but then uh, Naomi countered and then trapped her, her her leg in between her knees and, and did that move where, uh, where how like where, where she's in the corner and and she and she grabs the opponent's head and and and, sh- and shakes her ass in that face. Oh yeah. But but then. She then also slammed Becky's head into the chamber several times using her legs. Oh yeah, exactly. And then the, what she did next, I thought was dope as hell, was after Becky was on was on the ground, Naomi climbed up a little bit further and then hit a hit a split leg drop on her. That, right. that shit was dope. And oh yeah. And it's crazy because, given how flexible and athletic Naomi is, I should have expected that. But even still, you know, it was it was it was very great to see. Exactly, that's a fact. The way that was, oh my god. Yeah. Then, of course, they had a double down when they when they both went for a cross body. Then, right. Then the clock struck zero, and, and to the and to everyone's delight. It, it it was officially Tiffy time because a, Tiffany Stratton was out the chamber next. Oh word, that's a fact. Then so, it, right. so it's then well, once she got out, she hit Becky Lynch with an Alabama slam into the turnbuckle. Oh yeah, he did. Then she hit some uh, a flipping splash that took out both Naomi and Becky. And and then when they were down, she hit a double drop uh, a double drop kick on them, or just a drop kick to both of them at the same time. Take your pick. Right. Then, exactly. And she also hit a spine uh, buster, a uh, spine buster to one of them. And oh, yeah, she did. And then she further showed off her strength by by lifting them, them both up at the same time. Right, that's facts. But, but um, you know, afterwards, Naomi hit a split leg of moonsault on on Becky Lynch. 
Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then, clock strikes zero again, out comes Liv Morgan. Um, first, first Liv threw Tiffany into the, um, the Elimination Chamber multiple times. Well, no, into the pod multiple times. Then... Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then, then Becky hit the back exploder to Tiffany Stratton into the chamber. And then... There was, this, there was a real crazy moment where she she locked in the disarmor on Tiffany while 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 using the chamber as an added as an added uh, as added as additional damage. That was some dope shit. Oh yeah, it really was. It was some dope shit for real. Yo, my that whole match. Yeah, unfortunately, there, there was a bit of a negative spot where. Naomi was was trying to hit a, a sunset a sunset flip power bomb from the top of the pod onto Liv Morgan, but Liv, but Liv was out of place, so Naomi had had to try and do what she could. Right. But after, exactly. yeah, but I'd say because of, but out of doing the move, uh, unfortunately, Naomi got caught lacking, and Tiffany Pender. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then, clock strikes zero again. Out comes Raquel Rodriguez. To which then she she, she starts she starts going off using her power, um, hitting hitting Tiffany Stratton with a spinning side slam. Then she slammed Becky into the chamber, but then kept hold of her and hit her with a fallaway slam. Uh, right. Shout, shout out to Scott Hall. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. Facts. Uh, then, then she she hit and live sort of sort of with a suplex that into the chamber, and then turned around and then threw her into the ring. Right. Then, but but you know she. She, she eventually got got on got ganged up on as Becky and Liv hit Raquel with a double DDT. Then clock oh, then clock track jail for the final time. Out comes Bianca Belair. And with, oh, yeah. to, to which, and during which Bianca gives Becky a stalling suplex once again, showing off her strength. And uh, and then, you know of course she had to do a kip up out the words just just to show off. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then then Tiffany thought she was slick and, and grabbed Bianca's braid, but uh, but you know Bianca overpowered her, and then once you once you pulled her in, hit her with a spine buster. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then then. Raquel uh, attempted to hit a suplex into the chamber. However, Bianca f- mm, countered out of it with an, uh, with, with, with an amazing counter into a DDT. Oh yeah, that's a fact. Then, Liv, then Liv hit a seated senton on on to Raquel, who was laid down on the turnbuckle. Pretty pretty dope spot. Well, and then. During uh, during during that time, Tef- Tiffany Stratton and Becky Lynch were, uh, were were on top of one of the pods, to which uh, to which Tiffany pushed Becky off of it, uh, and, and to which she landed on Raquel, and then and Tiffany hit, hit a swanton bomb off the pod. And which she she hit everyone except for Liv because Liv was in the ring. Right. And then exactly. and then later on, Liv hit Tiffany with Oblivion off the top rope to to, to eliminate to eliminate her. And man, the crowd was pissed. Yeah. Back, yo. yo, the crowd was booing. They were chanting bullshit. <laughs> That was shit was really something. Oh hell yeah, that fucking was. Oh my god. But, 
But but I'll but I'll admit uh, I was I was disappointed myself that that Tiffany got eliminated. But you know it is what it is. Oh yeah, man. Oh my God. Uh, anyways, Raquel had Bianca and slammed her into the chamber, and then power bombed her into the ring. Then she hit she hit her her finisher. For um, I still want to call it slam dunk. Because the, ori- yeah. the original name for it, the Chingona Bomb, was better than the, what it's called now. So, but any, right. but anyways, she she hit she hit her her finisher on both Becky Lynch and and Liv Morgan at the same time. Then, All right. Then Bianca hit the KOD on Raquel to, to, to eliminate her. Right. Then, uh, then, then Bianca hit a military press with, you know, on, on, uh, on, on Becky and dropped her on the Liv. But right. Then Liv attempted a senton, but she got through, thrown into the chamber. Yes, but we're all right, that was crazy. And Liv also launched um, Bianca into one of the pods. The, oh, right. Then, then, then another dope moment, ha- moment happened where Be- Becky uh, used both um, Bianca and Liv to hit a regular DDT and a reverse DDT at the same time. Right. That yeah. was fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Then, 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 then this one was, 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 was not. Um. Then, then Liv hit Becky with a superplex. That's to which, immediately afterwards, Bianca, Bianca try, tries to hit uh, a 450 splash on the Becky, but. Somehow Becky was able to see it and get and got, and got her knees up. Oh yeah, that's a fact. That was crazy. Well, and then, and then Bianca did gr- gather herself and tried to hit Liv with a KOD, but she countered it into a jawbreaker. But and then th- this sequence at first pissed me off, but then had me breathing a sigh of relief because then out of out of nowhere, Liv rolled up Bianca. Right, that, that pissed me off severely. Well, right. however, that was crazy. however, I I didn't even get a chance to be angry because immediately after she she rolled her up, uh, Becky hit her with the manhandle slam for the win. And like that, right. it will be the man at at WrestleMania facing the the, win, the winner of the women's world title match. Now, right. Yeah. Now, 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 let me preface by saying this: um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of, of Becky Lynch, but at the same time, uh, I don't dislike her. Like how I feel about her has changed compared to, I'd say maybe a year ago, where she used to really annoy me, and I was getting tired of seeing her in the main event picture. But you know. But, but in but in a way that's uh, subsided, where I don't where um it's more of I don't mind her, where if she's in a match I'm all for it because right. because be- Becky can put on a banger of a match with, with just with just about anybody, you know she could and and. Her versus versus if pretty much any anybody, especially at WrestleMania, is, is main event worthy. Right. And and let me and let me say this one more time. And, and actually, actually, no, I, I've never I've never said this because I, I I usually only refer to how good somebody is as him. I, I've never done her. So let me so let me preface by saying this: 
Liv Morgan is not her. All, all you Liv Morgan stands, freaking get over yourself. She, her and the main and any kind of main event match at WrestleMania will not go over well. She, she, she doesn't have it. Uh, and and then also on a side note, a bit of bad news for uh, Raquel Rodriguez was remember that disease th- that she had that kept her out of action. Oh yeah, it it uh unfortunately it flared up during the match. Fuck. So uh, hopefully it, it doesn't cause her to miss any uh any um. Any any more in ring time because it's already because it, it's it's already tore it's already m- messed her career up enough. Right. But right. but but you know in in any case, congrats to Becky Lynch. And also, l- let me also say this. Um. I I honestly think out of out of, out of everybody. Tiffany Stratton has the has the brightest future. Cause, oh, yeah. cause number one, she definitely showed uh, that she, uh, that that she's ready for the big time. And, oh yes. Yeah. And especially because of her time fighting Becky Lynch and NXT, I think I think she's shown that she can hang with with, with the best of them. Right. And. This this might be a stretch just because it's still a it's still a long ways out, but I think Tiffany should win Money in the Bank. Oh yeah, that's a fact. But uh, what you know, we'll 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 we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens as as time progresses. That's a fact. We yeah. shall. Yeah. Anyways, moving on, we had the. We we have the tag title match, Judgment Day, defending against what's known now known as the New Catch Republic. Right. Now, now uh, a a a bit uh, a bit of funny note for the Judgment Day. Um, our truth uh was not present. Uh, at the show, because unfortunately he made, and this is a very honest mistake. He, he made, he made, he made the honest mistake of uh, mistake in Austria for Australia. Mm. Hey yo, that was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> you know. Anyways, um. Yeah. Then you know they uh the 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 the, anna- the announcer was um well, 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 was you know in, 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 introducing them and everything, right? Yeah, exactly. But but then before, before they could introduce the uh the the judgment day. Uh, right. Uh, Dominic snatched the mic from him, and then he attempted to, to, you know, say a few words and put over the Judgment Day. But freaking, but the but the crowd, but the crowd as usual was all over Dom, and he couldn't say a damn thing. Exactly. And you know, eventually he said, you know, for people to bow to all rise for the Judgment Day, but again, you could barely hear him because he. Cause they were, cause they were booing so loud that his voice was getting drowned out. Yeah, they. <laughs> <laughs> they want smoke. Yeah, yo. <laughs> I mean, I mean, personally, I think what they need to do, in my opinion, for Dom, is that that Dom needs to instead just ignore the crowd and just keep talking. Cause, cause, in my, cause, in my opinion, what'll happen is that, sure, you know, no one's gonna hear him. But but for me, what will eventually happen is that eventually the crowd's gonna shut up, or at least lower their booing, and then finally he'll be he'll be able to talk. Of course, right. of course, I could be wrong, and and it, and it all blows blows up 
and, and it all blows up in my face. Damn. <laughs> it already blows up my face. <laughs> um, all right. So, now, underway with the match, Damien Priest and Finn Balor had a nice looking backdrop, I'm assuming backbreaker and leg drop combo. Oh, yeah. Then, then there was a, then was a, then there was a time where Balor and Priest were outside the ring, and Pete Dunn and Pete Dunn hit a moonsault to take them both out. That's right. Then, then Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate have their own little uh, double team moves, hitting a clothesline German suplex combo. And, right. and actually, it, it actually reminded me of the of um, me seeing that kind of combo in the Day of Reckoning series. But oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this moment was was pretty interesting, where Ben Balor tried to run and clothesline debate, but he got caught. And Bate hit him with a spinning side slam that honestly looked like it looked like Baron Corbin's deep six. Yeah, that's right. Of course, he, he didn't. He, of course, you know he didn't do it as good as Corbin did, but it was still very, very nice to watch. Oh, very. That's facts. And then, and then, and then Tyler Bate showed off why he's the big strong boy. Lifting up Damian Priest and then putting him in an airplane spin. Oh yeah, and, that was crazy. And I, and, I, and I don't know how he wasn't more dizzy than what than what he was. Uh, right. I think I would have been dazed for for so long on the airplanes from that airplane spin. Oh yeah, then that's a fact. <laughs> yeah, then. Then towards the end, uh, Pete Dunn hit Finn Balor with the bitter end. However, before the ref could count to three, Dominic put Finn Balor's foot underneath the rope to break uh, to break up the pin. Oh yeah. But then, but then Tyler Bate wanted to be a little hoe and snitched on Dominic to get him ejected. Right. Crazy. But, but Dom didn't didn't leave quietly in that good night and at first he he did he refused to leave to which then a moment happened where um where I don't know I don't know if it happened to you but the screen went black did you did that happen to you oh um, nah uh well, well well in any case for some people the screen went black for a couple seconds and the reason why the screen went black was because the crowd was was flipping Dom off Oh shit! Oh, I think it did. I think it did. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, t- it turns out that's what happened. Oh wow! And I guess even on on the WWE Network, you know, they they can't uh, they can't they can't do that. But hey, it is, it is what it is. All right. Anyway, so anyways, he he event, so Dom's eventually gone. In which, then, Dunn and Bate hit a double, a double Tyler Driver ninety-seven on the Finn Balor. However, uh, Priest pulled Tyler Bate out of the ring to prevent the three count. Then Dunn attempted a springboard move on the Priest. However, Priest caught him and hit him, and hit him with the flatliner, ramming his head into the apron. Then, Ben Balor and Priest tried to call game, but Tyler Tyler Bate hit Damian Priest with a hurricanrana, which in turn caused um, uh, Priest to run into the well to knock Ben Balor off of the top rope. Then, yeah, that was crazy. Then. Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn decided to start wailing on Priest and start lighting him up with mad punches. Damn. 
then then they attempted a double team move from the top rope but Finn Balor was holding on to Priest's foot for dear life so he wouldn't fall so he wouldn't fall off that's crazy and and in, and in turn this this helped set things up as Priest hit a double excuse me a super double choke slam on uh, for, for both of them to which then Balor then hit the coup de gras on to Tyler Bate and like that the Judgment Day retained and this match was absolutely great oh wow you know what I'm saying oh hell yeah it was that was a great fucking match I, I really enjoyed it man uh I, got, I definitely gotta I definitely gotta give it to to uh the new catcher Republic you know that they once they once again did they did they thug this as usual and even in, even in the agony of defeat they still show they still you know they still showed out right that's a fact so you know if they ever get if they ever get another shot I think they I think they definitely are deserving of it word but in my opinion because the judgment day retained I think what this is gonna set up is is the Judgment Day versus the Awesome Truth for the tag titles? Right, that's a fact. And if that happens, then you know, when we do our predictions for WrestleMania, well, I'll have a bit to say about that. Exactly. Pretty much all good. Anyways, you know, moving on, we have the Men's Elimination Chamber match. Now, right to start things off. L.A. Knight and Drew McIntyre start things off. Um, bit, uh, uh, on, on, a, on a side note, this was pretty funny. Um, while while Logan Paul was still in, in his pod, he got a magic marker from somebody, and and he was writing on his pod saying Kevin sucks. And and you know it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to realize that. In order for it to be written front ways for everyone to see on the camera, he had to write it backwards. Right. And then he also drew devil horns. The uh, just uh, and then he acted as if he had the horns on, and then he wrote and then he drew a fat person basically saying that that was Kevin. Right. Just you know. Some some great at heel work. Oh hell yeah! Actually, also before then, when he was doing his entrance, uh, some dude and so, uh, a kid in the crowd had a bottle of Prime in his hand, and and uh, and Logan as a heel took a, took took the gum he was chewing and put and stuck and stuck it onto the kid's bottle. But, 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 you know, in turn, instead of the kid getting upset that he, that he did that, the kid said that he was cheering. Right, right. So, eh, one could say that that attempt uh, as, as being a heel uh, failed a bit just because they, they liked that he did it. Right. Anyways, you know, no, no, not much happened. Uh. Kevin Owens came uh, came out he came out third. Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Then afterwards, Bobby Lashley came out, did his thug bizzle. Uh, All right. Uh, then, then afterwards, Randy Orton came out, and and how fitting Logan Paul came out last. Right, and and of course he, he did he did pay for his uh, for his and for the antics that he was doing inside the pod, in which uh, Ko slammed his head in, into the pod multiple times, more specifically the part of the pod that he that he that he drew all over. Right, and uh, then and then also. Bobby Lashley speared 
Logan Paul threw one of the pods. Oh, yeah. But, unfortunately, Bobby Lashley was unfortunately eliminated first. Uh, as he he was struck by two, two Claymores to get pinned. And, right. Uh, now, honestly, I, I figured the final testament, or... Karen Cross was gonna try and find a way to interfere to distract Lashley and get him eliminated, but you know, it is what it is. Right. Now later, Randy Orton hit a draping DDT to Kevin Owens, but one thing I noticed that he was that he hurt his that he hurt himself when doing so. Oh word, that's right. Uh and then what and then something something interesting happened was that when the chamber got opened up you know because uh Lashley got eliminated AJ Styles pulled up and he was sipping yeah. and he was sipping some mad, he was sipping a lot of haterade because he came <laughs> I'm serious man he was he was sipping mad haterade because he came in with a chair and started, and he started lighting up LA night. He was, he was, he was taking liberties on him, yeah, just destroying him with a steel chair. Oh yeah. And then, <laughs> yep. And then finally, the the chair on top was that he hit Styles Clash on onto the chair, and then needless to say, LA night got eliminated. Just, just a, just some major haterism on the, on Styles' behalf, but part of me thinks that he did it as revenge because of what happened when it came to his qualifying match, in which I think LA Knight inadvertently interfered. Oh yeah. But I don't think, I don't think LA Knight did that on purpose. I think, I, think, I, I forget. So I think something happened in order for LA Knight to interfere, but it. But you know, this uh, this is obviously gonna kickstart a feud with that. Well, pro- I mean, not kickstart. Uh, progress the feud between them. Right. Um, who knows? Maybe they may, maybe it might lead to WrestleMania. That's a fact. And LA Knight AJ Styles. I think that's gonna be one of the matches to steal the fucking show. Yeah. And I and honestly, I think AJ might might be turning heel. Yeah, I think so. It's being said in a rumor report that he's neither face or heel. He's just whatever the hell it said. Oh, oh, oh! Then he he's a tweener then. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, he's been he's been constantly having having beef with the OC because while they're trying to still be united, he has been distancing himself from the OC, and it's even gotten to the point where. Where now him and Carl Anderson have come to blows. Right, exactly. Um, but and and then of course the OC is now on NXT. So, who knows? Oh wow. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Kevin Owens hit a swan. Well, a try to swanton onto Drew, but Drew but Drew got his knees up. Right. Then Drew and then in turn tried to hit him with a claymore. However, it got countered as Kevin Owens hit him with a pop a power bomb. Then, then out of nowhere he he hit uh, he hit um KO with the RKO to eliminate him. And and uh, you know uh, I'm 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 gonna say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it for the for the end of the match to say all this, because you know it, it, it'll make sense for what I'm gonna say, and I think you know what what I'm gonna say about Orton. Oh wow, I think I do. But anyways, Logan Paul, while no one was looking, climbed to the top uh, of one of the pods and hit a crossbody on the Drew McIntyre. Honestly, uh, I I thought he was he was gonna get a 
a little more air than what he got. But also, I'm glad he didn't because had he gotten more air, he probably would have he probably would have hit his head on 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 the top of the chamber. Right. But anyways, uh, unfortunately for Logan, this is where he fucked up because a little while after he pulled out some brass knuckles from his tights, but. He, he was taking all day to taunt and whatnot, and this cost him because he he because he got hit with the RKL and and eliminated. Right, that was crazy. Then, then you know it was down to just Drew and Orton. Or, Orton hit 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 a, hit, hit a draping DDT to to Drew, and then. Honestly, I thought it was over for Orton because of uh, what was going on with him. But still, he managed to hit the RKO on the Drew. However, and I did not expect this, Logan Paul, who didn't, who hadn't left the chamber yet, knocked uh, knocked Orton out with with with, the, with one lucky punch. Of course, you know, with the help of brass and knuckles and. And and while he knocked him out with that, Drew picked the bones, and Drew McIntyre wins, and he will face Seth Rollins one more time. Hell yeah! Now, here's the thing. I know, like I said, like I said before, it was it was obvious that that Drew was winning, but I like how they had him win like this. That way, even though even though it was predictable that he was going to win, they didn't make the the finish. Be it would be predictable. Yes, and, exactly. Like, honestly, I expected the Drew, Drew to win decisively with a claymore and shit, you know. But right. so I, in turn, I appreciate that that they decided to have him win in a cheap way. Oh yeah. But also, this in turn is now going to start a. Uh, uh, build up to a match at WrestleMania between Logan Paul and Randy Orton. That is correct. But speaking of Randy Orton, um, God, I don't know if, if, if this guy is 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 being the world's greatest seller of moves, or if his back is is just given out. But. So many times I was so concerned for Orton because this man looked like he was in ridiculous amounts of pain from his back, you know? And just like every move that landed on his back, every move that he did that landed on his back, just like everything hurt, man. It was killing me. And I'm th- and I'm thinking and I'm thinking, you, you remember what Orton said? How he wanted he wanted to go another ten years, right? Mm-hmm. And I, for me, if 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 he wasn't selling and he was really fighting through the pain, I don't think he's gonna make it to ten years. Right. If anything, I don't know. I don't even think he's gonna make it to five years. Oh yeah. And you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it sucks because you know Orton is one of is one of the all time greats, and and more importantly, and I and I will always appreciate this of him is that he is a wrestling guy through and through, because even though I'm sure he 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 has a chance and opportunity to make it big in Hollywood like how The Rock and John Cena have, he refuses to. Right. And I will always appreciate that of him. But I got you, but you gotta get why you said that. But still, man, his back. Oh, word, yeah, his back, man. Cause you know that back kept kept him out for like a year, for like a year and a half, and and honestly, like, again, I, I, I'm just hoping that he that he's just selling perfectly. No but, but it's just too much. It's, it's, it's just too much for me to believe that he's just selling, and, and that's not real pain. 
strong word, man. Well, that's a fact. Me too. Let's just hope every everything's all good. Word, yo. I hope so too. Anyways, oh, you know, congrats, congrats to Drew McIntyre. Hopefully, he'll win the title against Seth at WrestleMania. Hell yeah, hope, bro. Yeah, I hope my boy Drew wins. I hope all, or if my boy Seth retains, I would, I would mind it. I love both my boy Seth Rollins, and my boy Drew McIntyre, but I'm leaning more towards my boy Drew McIntyre again. He needs that shit, especially in front of the fucking crowd, especially in heel run right now. Oh my god. Yep. We ain't my man cause we on the same page with that shit. You know it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Moving on, we have the main event: Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax. Uh, Rhea, despite technically technically being a heel, well, she's more of a tweener now. If if anything, despite being a part of the Judgment Day, you know, of course, she was getting the, the heroes welcome. You know, being from uh, being from from Australia, you know, it was mommy's house. But also, Nia Jax still had, still, you know, showed her presence. You know, let let, let them know that she's still here, that she's here too. Right. Anyways, on, on to the match. Um. Well, first off, let, let, let me get this out the way because it's it's all over the internet. I might as well say it too. You know, we, mommy was out here. With all this ass, double cheeked up on a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Well, what? What? Actually, tec- well, well, technically, depending on where you are, Saturday night, Saturday morning. But still, she was she was out here with all this ass, double cheeked up. Facts. But speaking of speaking of double cheeked up, uh, Naya. I uh, did something in the match that honestly I didn't I didn't think she was gonna do, but I'm glad she did it, and I hope she continues doing it for all of her matches moving forward. In which she hit uh, mommy with the stink face. Man, nah. well that also, and then you know for to start off the match, she 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 was she was dominating for for a good minute, hitting a hitting a. Well, I guess you could say a seated senton or just a, a regular senton. Then she also hit a leg drop. Right. And then, then there was one where she she decided to, in, to channel her inner Lex Luger and put Rhea in the torture rack. But eventually, uh, she count. But eventually, she countered into the. Uh, in, 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 into a guillotine. Oh yeah, right. But, but, but um, then, then afterwards, Rhea attempted a hurricanrana. However, um, Nia caught her and hit her with with a with a double power bomb. You know, okay. you know what I'm saying hit her with one, but she but she. Lifted her back up and hit her with another. All right, that's a, that was crazy. Yeah. Then there was a moment where Rhea, Rhea hit a hit a hit a missile drop kick from the top rope onto her. Man, eh. right. But also, Nia during with during the exchange hit a hit a Samoan drop. Oh yeah, that was crazy. Then Rhea tried to go to the top rope to try something. However, Naya met her up top and hit her with a super Samoan drop. Oh yeah. Then that was oh my god crazy. Then you know then then uh, then Naya tried tried to go for the home run and hit the annihilator. However, before she could even drop, Rhea got up and hit her with the electric chair in, in into the into the turnbuckle. Oh, word. Then while they were outside, this 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 moment w- was pretty dope. Where 
Now, I, at first, hit, hit her with a Samoan drop onto the announce table. Then, she got up on the, on the barricade and then hit her with an elbow drop through the announce table. Oh, word. That's a fact. That was fucking ridiculous. But, but Rhea's resolve was strong because, because, you know, she ain't give up. And afterwards, Rhea eventually, because... Nia hit the Annihilator, but Rhea kicked out. And then, right. and then there, there, there was a one where Nia j- went to the top rope, and she was going to tr- try a diving move. However, before she could even jump, Rhea got up and hit her with a superplex. Oh, yeah. And then the superplex hit and set her up for the Riptide, and... At WrestleMania, it will be Becky Lynch versus Mommy. Oh yeah. As Rhea retained against Nia Jax. Um honestly this this was by far Nia Jax's best match of her career. And and I don't and I'm not doing that to throw shade. This this was uh, this was Nye's best showing ever. She she definitely showed that she has been working on her craft in the ring, and she she's she she's done she she did her thug dizzle in this match. And just like and just like the New Catch Republic, she looked great even in defeat. All right. And if she does. And and hopefully this this you know is only a speed bump, you know, for her, and she continues her momentum as a dominant woman in the division, and who knows maybe eventually she'll she'll get another title shot in which this time she'll win. Right. But uh, overall, this this paper this paper was uh, really good. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, that, that actually also before before I ended, you know, we we of course we have to talk about the uh, the Grayson Waller effect, in which number yeah. in which number one, Grayson, Grayson Waller also got the hero's welcome, and oh, yeah. and then before he he started the show, well he well started his show, he partook in his traditional shoey. With a fellow Australian, uh, I forget his name, but but he's a UFC fighter. To which they they both they both partook in a shoey before well, before he got down to business. Right. And then. Oh yeah. And then he also, this and then he also uh, was and then he was also pandering to the crowd a bit. Did the uh, also. He also did the Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. That, that was great. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember. So, anyways, you know, he he then, you know, introduces, uh, South of, <laughs> he, he, he introduces, uh, Cody Rhodes and Tacky. And, and, ta- and Tacky once again lives up to his name. Wearing, wearing whatever the hell he was wearing. Good God. And then, right. And then also, I couldn't help but notice that he stole Velveteen Dream's glasses. Oh, yeah. He did. Yo! Like, 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 Dream was the only one that had those three lens glasses. So he, so he dead stole those from the Dream. Right. Anyways, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, you know, Grayson was talking about, you know, WrestleMania and their match at WrestleMania. To which then also, Cody Rhodes pretty much called out The Rock to a match, and he didn't say WrestleMania. He just said he just said wherever, wherever, whenever. To which and then to which, uh, Tacky uh, showed his support. Pretty much. Plant the seeds for, yeah. a, pretty much planting the seeds for a tag match, uh, of um, you know, of 
The Rock and Roman Reigns versus was Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. Right. But then this moment became interesting where um Grayson Waller was saying something, but then uh but then Austin Theory, who was also there, actually snatched the mic out of his hand. Exactly. And to which Grayson was sick. He 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 was First he was stunned, but then he got mad. Understandably so. Yeah, exactly. I was saying, like, yo, it looked like Grayson about to turn heel. I mean, we face. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it's a shame because I, I wanted A-Town Down Under to win tag, tag, team, tag Team Gold, but I digress. Anyways, he starts talking shit to, to, to uh, Cody Rhodes, you, using several of The Rock's catchphrases. Before, right. before Cody uh, decides to pummel, to pummel him, and and it's funny because they actually give Grayson the option to try and step in to help to help Theory, but but he but he but he refused, oh, but he doesn't move an inch, and he doesn't do it because he's scared. He he he, he does he he does it because he was still feeling some type of way about about Theory snatching the mic out of his hands. Right. So, to which in turn, then, then um, then Tacky hit the curb stomp, and there it was. And then they proceeded, fire. and then they then they proceeded to to tear the set apart. Oh, where that's crazy. But, but you know, in any in any case, like I said, this uh, pay per view was uh was really great. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Facts. I I I, 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 I I'm I'm definitely happy with, with what with, with what with what went down. And and honestly going and going into Raw, I I think this I think we'll we'll, we'll be in for so we'll be in for an interesting Raw. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Facts. And then also before we sign off, I need I need to mention something that uh, Australian wrestlers, uh, any Hardwell, she actually got her chance at being at the show because, of course, she initially had a chance to be in the Women's Elimination Chamber but failed to qualify, which I was disappointed for because I wanted her to to wrestle in front of her home crowd, you know, because he because she's just just as Australian as Grayson Waller and 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 Mommy are. But she did get her chance because she was in a, in a pre-show match, so. Oh yeah. So yeah, but also Bronson Reed, I was very disappointed that he wasn't in the men's chamber because I wanted him to also get the hero's welcome. However, there was a a good reason as to why, and and this reason I'm very happy for, because he is now a father. Because his wife gave birth. So, congratulations to Bronson Reed uh, on being a father now. Yes, sir. That's right. So, and so with all all that out the way, we're going to go ahead and, and end this right here. Um, I definitely want to thank each and every one of y'all for taking the time. I think you busy scheduled a couple of chill with your boys. I definitely want to thank the Hummer Man, as always, for coming through, kicking his wrestling knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah, you already know my, no, my nigga calls Peyton. Yo, yo, we gonna be right back at here, at y'all. We gonna be right back right here, coming at y'all with the predictions for NXT Stand and Deliver and also WrestleMania's Night 1 and 2. Yes, sir. So, if y'all enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit, hit the like button. Comment if you feel like it. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. And as always, while we're at Struggle Vision Productions, it's the Hitman and the Homeland. And if you see us coming, run. <laughs>